All right, so today I'm gonna show you guys how I mix my song, Lost Again. I mixed it in an untreated room. So if you're at home and you know recording in a bedroom or just a random room in your house, hopefully me kind of showing you my process will just help make things easier for you. And I'm gonna try to explain things as simple as possible. But yeah, here's the song we're gonna be going through today. Again this year. First thing to keep in mind, when it comes to mixing vocals, you can only fix the vocals so much with your mixing. Let's say there's a word or a phrase that you didn't say how you wanted, or you don't like how it sounds, you're probably not going to be able to mix your way into making it sound how you want. The best thing you can do is just go and re-record that vocal or have whatever artist you're working with go and re-record that vocal as well. In addition to that, if you're not working in a treated room, I highly recommend using a mattress, pillows, bed sheets or like you know like a cover for a bed i don't know if a sheet's gonna do much honestly kind of placing it around the room where you're hearing echoes to just make it so the recording sounds a little bit better especially if you're not using like a very nice mic and honestly even if you're using a nice mic because it's probably going to pick up a lot more um another plugin that's really helpful if you are in a noisy environment like i live in los angeles and where i live you hear helicopters coming around and so one plugin that is very helpful for dealing with that is a plugin called ns1 and basically how it works is and this is not sponsored either is it sets like a level of noise that it will pick up so basically you just have to lift up this knob and it'll take out any background noise so when you're recording your vocals you won't hear it in the background all right so now let's get into actually mixing your vocals and i'm not using stock plugins today but i'll make sure to tell you which stock plugin you can use for pretty much everything that i'm doing all right so the first thing that i typically add to my vocal chain is just auto -tip. You can use something like Pitcher in FL Studios, and there are tons of other plugins you can use as well. Now for this, what you need to do is just know the key of your song or your beat that you're you know, rapping or singing over. And if you don't know, you can just use this website, tunebat.analyzer, and then just drag it in right here. And it'll tell you what key you're in. That's like the quickest and easiest way to do it. And what Autotune does is it just corrects the pitch. And honestly, it just saves a lot of time in your recording. So you don't have to always do a perfect take. If you want your vocals to sound more natural, you could use something like Melodyne, which honestly I don't really use ever because it just is so time consuming to do. But in FL Studios, there's also a plugin called Newtone, which you can do by just going to edit in pitch corrector. And then you can kind of do the same thing you do in Melodyne. All right, here's how the vocals are sounding thus far. So they're very muffled right now, not sounding great so far, but don't worry, by the end of this, it will sound good. Now, the next thing that I typically do on my vocal chain personally is I'll add an EQ and this EQ, sometimes I'll put it before auto-tune and I'm just cutting out some of the lows right here and I'll just show you how it sounds with and without. Now with. So like slightly cleaner. Some of you might be like, sounds exactly the same. Honestly, it might sound the same, but everybody does this. So I highly recommend doing it. And eventually maybe your ear will be able to hear the difference. And then after that, I'll typically go in and use a compressor. Some people will use the compressor a little bit earlier in their chain as well. Somewhat debated topic, but this is just what I do. All right, but before I'll use a compressor, one thing that I like to do often is I'll use this plugin called Vocal Rider. And basically what it does is when you record your vocals, some parts are louder, some parts are quieter. And typically what you'll use is a compressor to kind of even out those levels. But oftentimes if the levels are very different, then when you use a compressor, it might squash your vocals and just make them not sound very good. And so basically what this does is it kind of follows your vocals and keeps them at a constant level automatically. That way you don't have to manually go in and basically create a vocal automation, for example, where people will go in and like do something like this right here, boom, boom, just to make the vocals more consistent. Just saves a lot of time there. Next, what I'll use is a compressor and you can just use the fruity compressor here. I like Arvox, which you might've seen a lot of people use, literally just because it's so simple. It's literally just a gain right here gate and then this one knob and I think it sounds pretty good. And now what a compressor does is similar to the vocal rider where it kind of gets a consistent balance for the volume of the vocals is, well, that's pretty much 
what it does. So it makes the widest parts closer to the loudest parts, etc. Kind of just smooths things out and makes everything sound more consistent. So here's it without any compression. Really quiet. So this also is boosting the volume a little bit if you want to keep the volume from going up, you just go right here um, to kind of even things out. Most people will typically bump their volume up, but you know, I'm a little lazy. So I was just like, fuck it, I'll just use the compressor. And as you can hear still, the vocals are still sounding pretty boxy, but we're gonna brighten them up a little bit. But overall for this song specifically, I wanted everything kind of lower, deeper, almost like kind of like lo-fi. I don't know. Um, but yeah, all right. So next up we have the de -er that I add in my chain is just Pro DS. What you can use in FL Studios is Fruity Maximus or it's just Maximus, not Fruity, but. And they have a de -er right up here. You can use one of these. Now I have no idea how to use it because I don't use it, but it's there. So, you know, just look up a tutorial after this. And a de -er just de -esses. So, shh, tss, tss, those sounds. That's what it gets rid of. <laughs> I really like this Pro DS one just cause it has some extra parameters. Basically how it works is you have this frequency range, which you'll hear a lot of the S's in it. And you'll set this threshold to basically at what level do you want it to actually, you know, you can just read this right here. <laughs> and then this is the threshold right here, which is just where the de -er is triggered. It's cool because you get like a cool visual. So there's an S right there, I guess. All right, now to kind of make the vocals pop out a little bit more, I actually ended adding, and I don't know why I put it this early in the chain, a, a saturator or a distortion tool. It's kind of the same thing. And I actually usually use Saturn 2 here, but for this one, I decided to use a little radiator without. Now with. So there is a little bump on the volume there, but it is overall adding some warmth. And for this one, you could use something like Sound Goodizer. I don't know if you'd want to use Fruity Distortion for this. You could try it though. And then the next plugin, there is not an FL plugin for this, but if there's any plugin I would recommend potentially buy. This one is great because it has many uses. But basically what this does is it picks out all of the frequencies that are you know, sound harsh to the ear, essentially. It's kind of what it's doing is, you know when you go through with an EQ and you sweep through and you do this to get rid of like a bad frequency? It's essentially doing that in a really quick way. And then this can also be used as a de -er as well. And another feature, I didn't use it in this song, but I've used it before. You can use it and sidechain it to like your entire beat. The great thing about doing that is you can really make your vocals stick out more because it'll carve out the exact points in your beat that are kind of clashing with your vocals. And so it's like a really powerful tool in terms of using that. But again, this was just a kind of a really simple song I made. All right, so here's without. And now with. You can probably just hear it. It's making the vocal sound a little bit brighter. It's getting rid of some of that harshness. It's doing what it's supposed to do. All right, next thing I use, this is basically like an EQ and a saturator combined. So most people here would use like a parametric EQ and start carving out parts of their vocal that they want to kind of stand out to make it sound a little bit brighter. And this is a plugin called Spectre. Basically, it's like a EQ with saturation. So it just kind of makes things sound warmer as you kind of bring certain areas up. And for this, I just really went with what sounded good. I didn't do anything too massive. I used to, when I would you just do an EQ, it'd be like way up here, way up here. But I didn't feel like that would be right for the song. And I don't think you typically need to do that. Um, and so I'm gonna show you what it sounds like with and with out. And this is a little bit different than an EQ, remember, because it also adds some saturation. So here's it without. Now with. And this was like, this made a huge difference on the vocals. As you can see, like they sound a lot more bright and more full. And really, even though this does have saturation, just an EQ in general is one of the best tools period for your vocals. And so a good way to brighten up is in this area over here. I like to bring up the mids in my vocals too. 
as you see here. Don't try to just copy what I'm doing here. Listen to your own vocals. Just do what sounds best to you. All right, and then the last thing I like to add, just for fun, this is like, actually not even the last thing because I got to talk about reverb, which you've been hearing this entire time. I probably should just turn it off, <laughs> but I'll show you guys the difference in a second. But all right, next we have a doubler, essentially. This is what this is, or a chorus. And I just use micro shift. It's a pretty low setting, but it just makes your vocal sound, I don't know, a little bit more spacey because that's kind of what I go for. Here, let's go without and with, and you could use like a fruity chorus course or something like this now with it's gonna be very subtle so it kind of just doubles it um, a little bit adds like a nice chorus feel at least i'm pretty sure what this does so a similar plugin according to chat gpt would be fruity stereo shaper so check it out all right now into adding reverb, reverb and delay reverb. and i like to add a pretty decent amount of reverb especially what you'll need to do for reverb is you'll need to add it to like a separate channel so basically all you need to do is right click rename it reverb and then go down here we'll right click and then go to wrap to this track. And then now you have a reverb sent. And then for your delay, you can have, a lot of people have a long and a short delay. I'll explain that in a second. First, let's talk reverb. I like to use Valhalla Vintage Verb. Feel free to use Fruity Reverb, but I like Valhalla Vintage Verb. I've used tons of reverbs. It's my favorite one. And now if you want to know where to set your pre-delay specifically for the type of reverb you're using, just literally go on Google and look up reverb calculator, reverb and delay calculator, and then just type in your BPM. And it'll give you the amount you're supposed to use. You can go with that if you want like an exact number. Honestly, I usually just play it by ear and what sounds good to me. Here's what it sounds without. You need reverb. It's it's a game changer. <laughs> it just doesn't sound as good or as lush. What I do specifically for my reverb is I like to cut off a bit of the highs. You can also use any cue and do something like this if you want. Cut out some of the highs and lows. It'll just sound better overall. And then if you want to crank your reverb up and get even more out of your reverb, you can use a free plugin called OTT which you can download anywhere and basically this just makes the reverb go even harder all right so now here's it with the reverb the Keep in mind though, it doesn't have any delay on it, so it will sound a little bit different than you might have heard it. And then MOTT on as well. This makes it more lush, and you can also use OTT to achieve that as well. This took me forever to figure out. Shout out to Indie Music Academy that's the only person I could find that on. All right, now let's get on to delay. Your reverb and your delay are all dependent on the style of music you're making. If you're rapping, you probably don't need too much. I think I was watching a Mike Dean video and he like barely puts any. Now, I like to use two delays. One is a longer delay and I just use H delay stereo. You can just use fruity delay. And then I just use this setting right here. It's the one eighth. I don't go too crazy with it though. As you can see, it's turned down, but here's what it sounds like with and without. Now with again kind of like makes the vocal sound a little bit more spacey and then I put this EQ on it as well just cutting out some of the highs and the lows what some people will do and you can do this as well if you only want your long delay in certain parts or to fill up maybe empty spaces is what they'll do is they'll automate it so we go right here create automation clip what you would essentially do is maybe towards the end of these vocals you would turn it on so it kind of fills up some of this space and then when your vocals are actually playing like over here you'd maybe go and turn it off and this is kind of a horrible example because I'm being lazy right now, but I think you get the point. Right here, this is just a short delay, and this is more of like a slap back delay. It's 1.30 second. Listen to this before and after. So just the slightest difference on this one. So what this slapback delay is doing is it just provides a little bit of extra space without creating echo. So this can be probably something if you're doing rap or whatever. I would assume this would sound somewhat decent on your vocals if you don't want it to be, you know, really echoey and spacey. And yeah, feel free to stream Lost again if you want. I'll leave that in the description. And also feel free to check out this video because I recorded this song at my mom's house in one of the worst studios of all time. But I'll see you later. Peace.